be good for to write something for Jason um, to play, and um, that he, you know, he, I don't know who else could have played this part really, and um, and so uh, and so that was how it began. Do you translate it now? Uh, no, because they have everybody understand this translation. Yeah. Wait, so why do we even need to say that? <laughs> why why do you ask the question in Italian? Yes, but uh, I, I won't make waves. <laughs> Jason, tu conosci il cinema oh, I see, I see. di Wes Anderson? <ride> okay. eh, conosci il cinema di Wes molto bene, e quindi immagino che abbiate un affiatamento. Eh... I, I can't hear my translator. I can't hear the translator. I, I, I don't hear from this moment. Huh? È una oh, scena... uh, let me turn up the volume. È una scena che abbiamo provato poco fa, questa. Oh, okay, now I hear it, yeah. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> Dunque, ho semplicemente detto che eh, conosci molto bene il cinema di Wes e eh, credo che abbiate tra di voi un, un grande affiatamento. Mi chiedo come abbiate lavorato questa volta in cui l'obiettivo era di riprodurre l'effetto, l'atmosfera, il sapore e anche la bellezza di un tipo di cinema che credo abbiate entrambi. Yes, I, I, that is the case. Um, as Wes just said, um, <laughs> uh, that the inspiration uh, came from a scene in Novel Court, and um, I think all three of us share a love of uh, those movies, the Italian cinema. Um, but really, uh, I think whenever I, I have the good fortune to work with Wes, um, it's, um, it's really its own thing. And when you. Moments. And um, so it's a very short film. In fact, this Q&A is already longer than the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> La, ce ce l'avevamo detto appunto come questo poco fa. Parleremo molto più che vedere. Giusto, quindi è venuto il momento diciamo, di, che voi che noi vediamo tutti assieme ciò di cui stiamo parlando. Quindi adesso vedremo questi dieci minuti. Subito dopo ci sarà la possibilità di conversare ancora con eh, Wes Anderson, con Jason Schwarzman e con Roma Coppola e sarà anche il pubblico che potrà partecipare con delle domande. Quindi adesso... Would it be awkward for the audience if I... Would it be awkward for the audience if I sat here and watched them? Watch the movie because no, you are going to sit now. No, I want to sit here and just watch them. Okay. Is that weird? No, I shouldn't. I'll watch. It'll be fun. Uh, the first assistant director on Life Aquatic and, and helped us produce this film, and was the first assistant director on it. Um, and who, who else do we have here? Who, uh, we have Jada. Did, yeah, Jada, Jada has probably come up. I already mentioned her. I already mentioned her. Come up. Yeah, put another chair. Okay. We have we, we, we have yes we have Silvano who's who's the bus driver in the movie uh -huh. who worked on Michael Party who's been a friend for to, ever since then uh, Giorgio the waiter in the yeah. film who's uh, who we know very well uh, from Pierluigi and Alessandro and Alessandro you mentioned yeah, yeah Alessandro mentioned Francesco we have two Francescos. Uh, <laughs> Uh, ok, All right. if we think of more we'll add them later. Yeah. Ok, c'è qualcuno che vuole fare? Eccola lì, vedo una domanda sulla sinistra, estrema sinistra. Tieni la mano ben alzata. Eh, sì, volevo fare una domanda a Wes Anderson. E in tutti i suoi film c'è sempre un tema musicale nella colonna sonora che è molto presente sempre. Per esempio i Kings in Virgin Limited. Nel suo prossimo film, Gran Puta Pesto Del, qual è quel tema musicale? E inoltre una domanda per Jason Schwarzman, visto che sono un grande fan di Born to Death, quando è che potremo magari vedere un film di Born to Death? Ci sono novità da quel punto di vista. Grazie. Um, uh, the, 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 the music for the next film that I'm doing is... Um, well, the music is by Alexandre Desplat, who's a composer I've worked with. And we, we, um, we had an idea that we wanted to use a balalaika, uh, a, a balalaika orchestra, um, which we found in Moscow, and we brought them to Paris and recorded with them, and it's a very beautiful sound, and they were wonderful players. And 
the balalaika along with the with cymbalom. You know cymbalom? Uh, you hit the strings with it. It's like a dulcimer. Um, uh -huh. It's it's maybe Hungarian, uh -huh. um, and we uh, we and we had a Hungarian uh, cymbalom player named Johnny Lincoln who uh, came to England and recorded with us. And and so the music is um, it's the movie is set in Eastern Europe and it has a sort of mixture of sounds and it's really those sounds those kind of um, let's say traditional musical uh, sounds Russian and Eastern European filtered through a French uh, composer's uh, brain. Uh, oh, and then for the Bored to Death movie, there, um, the Jonathan Ames, the guy who created the show, is writing a movie of it right now. But, I, you know, might not, who knows, maybe it'll happen. Huh? Yeah. Yes, right now it's yes. <laughs> In Italian or in English? In Italian. Okay. Um, sappiamo cos'è il cinema italiano, soprattutto negli anni 50, 60, 70, per i grandi registi uh, americani. Ma il cinema italiano contemporaneo come viene visto da attori, registi e produttori uh, oggi? Grazie. Well, for, for me, I, I, mean, I guess, you know, the, the most recent uh, one I've seen is the new uh, Paolo Sorrentino uh, film, which is, I think, maybe the best. Yeah. Um, I love Paolo's movies. Um, Tony, Tony uh, Servillo, also, he's amazing. Um, and that's a wonderful movie. Um, you know, not, but we don't know, we don't see, uh, I'm sure, 90% of the Italian movies. We, we, we saw Gomorrah, which is a great movie from the last few years. What a, what a recent, um, the other, other recent um, Italian movies. Uh, you know, I, I, I love many of the Nanny Moretti movies. I've been a friend of Nanny Moretti. Um, uh, yes, yes, Io sono... Di Luca Guadagnino, Io sono l'amore. Okay. Altre domande? Ancora sulla sinistra, poi al centro. Ah, ce n'è una qui? Ecco, dai. Ecco. I don't speak Italian, unfortunately. Uh, but Mr. Anderson, what a pity. I agree. Mr. Anderson, of all the characters you've created in your various films, which would you say are, is your favorite and that you're the most proud of, of having brought to life? Well, I don't. I you know I I don't I don't know the answer. I I don't know if I ever feel proud. I usually feel proud of the actor who made the char character uh, memorable. But I will say something about this particular little short film. Um, that character, I especially love Jason's uh, performance in that. And um, we had this idea that perhaps this is the first chapter of an ongoing um, film. And there are a couple of things that that, that this character of this racing car driver in the 50s and 60s and who knows how long ago, um, uh, that we would um, that we would make a series of... It's little, a promise? Well, I, somebody's got... I mean, we have to ask Prada. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, um, but I, they've been so uh, helpful and enthusiastic and encouraging, I bet they would at least let us try another one and see if it, uh, if it turns out. Um, the, um, uh, but the idea was, because this one is sort of connected to Fellini and, and Jeremy, and we filmed it at Cinecittà, that maybe the next one, that maybe we would, that these movies would be connected to different countries and different filmmakers, and there are many wonderful old movie studios, like there's one in Nice, and there's Toho, that's outside of Tokyo, and, and in places like Ealing, and that maybe we would go to the different old, movie studios that we love from old movies and try to set one of these there and maybe try to connect each one in some way to the filmmakers who worked in that place, in that country and it would be sort of a world tour of this guy. That's the idea. I mean, it probably never happened. It's a great idea. It's a great idea. Uh, 
Allora, prima una sotto e poi andiamo anche in piccionaia, diciamo. Prego. Okay. Hi, can you hear me now? Great. So I have a question for Wes Anderson. So uh, with your movies, which are always very colorful and sometimes also kind of crazy, I think, you opened um, the Cannes Film Festival already. Today you are here with this beautiful short film. Then you are um, going to open Berlin um, in February. So I would like to know, on one hand, what really um, does it mean for you that your films are so much uh, appreciated by uh, the international industry? And also maybe you can tell us a little bit about your next picture. Thank you. Well, I'm not sure. I don't know if I, I... I'll answer the second part better than the first part. So I'll focus on that. Um, the, the next picture is um, called The Grand Budapest Hotel. Um, and it's a movie that we made in, in a little city that's uh, in, uh, in Germany. It, half the city is in Germany and half is in Poland. And the story is, uh, is, is set in several different time periods. Uh, most of the movie takes place in the 30s. Um, it's in a sort of invented country. Um, that's something like Czechoslovakia mixed with uh, Hungary, mixed with Poland, something like that. Um, and um, I th guess the biggest role is played by Rafe Fiennes, who is a con concierge. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's great, Rafe Fiennes. Um, uh, a concierge in an old grand hotel. And then we have a wonderful uh, cast um, uh, around him, and including Jason Schwartzman. Um, and um, and uh, I guess the other thing I'd say about it is it's 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 the the it's. It, it maybe the big, I think the biggest inspiration for this um, story is uh, the work of Stefan Zweig, the novels and short stories and, um, and his memoir, uh, The World of Yesterday. Um, so it's sort of connected to that. And then the other thing is the, we kind of were trying to, you, to draw on 30s American movies set in Europe. Um, so sort of Lubitsch kind Lubitsch of guy, world, yes, yes. Um, and so those are kind of, it, that's sort of the, but the idea. If, if I understand well, you are going to use the same in the score, the same instrument, uh, which became famous with the third man of Orson Welles. It's not the same. Well, that one, you know, it's an interesting question, comment, because we wanted to use that instrument. Well, I've always heard that that's the zither. And that's, you know, that, uh, that, that's the sound of a zither. Well, we, Alexon wrote a part for a zither, um, but when the day came to record, we had a zither player there, and he played it, and I said, that doesn't sound like a zither. And he said, well, this is a, this is a zither. I, I'm a zither player. And I said, well, well, well the zither is like, um, da, 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 da. he said, no, no, that's, a, um, that's an Austrian zither. Yeah. Uh, it's different, one. But it, but it was sort of too late. So, <laughs> but is it well, look the same? we then. Is it, does it look the same? It doesn't look anything like it. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it. Um, it sounds more like a banjo. Um, and so then we, we, got, we tried to get an Austrian zither player who was in Germany, and, um, but it, was too, it, it wasn't so good. And so we ended up with. We didn't really do it like the third man in the end. Okay. It was fun for me because I love um, instruments and old instruments and things. And um, uh, Wes sent me a video that he made of uh, this guy playing the balalaika, which is a, an instrument you don't see too often, you know, in America and stuff. And um, and this guy playing was like inc like a virtuoso. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was when I got the email from Wes, I was in a store in New York that sells all these old guitars and things, and the guys there are so nice, but also they've like seen it all kind of attitude, you know, like they've seen the great players and stuff, and I was like, oh, look at this, As this guy, I have an email of a Bella player, supposed to be pretty good, and the guy was like, oh, let me see it, I'm sure he's pretty good, I mean, how good, and I put it on, and the guy was like, and, and it made me feel so uh, cool that I had an email of a <laughs> Bella Laika genius on my phone, it made me feel like forever I could go in that store and be kind of a badass. <laughs> Allora, eh, 